employing people, make sure you're not missing out on up to 4K a year. As business accountants, my team and I spent all day long helping business owners on their journey. And at the time we were releasing this video, it is we are now into the new personal tax year. So happy new tax year. It's an accountant joke, but it, it works every year in our circles. Anyway, it's very important for you because at this point, your allowance is reset. So every year, individuals in the UK are allowed to earn X amount of money before they start paying tax and national insurance, and those allowances all reset on the, the 5th of April. So 6th of April is the first sort of new tax year date. And as employers, this is important because other things reset as well and everything in the payroll year kind of lines up. So that's what we're gonna be talking about in this video. Is it an allowance called employment allowance that's open to small business employers? And as we talk about, employer could be you, could just be you, um, and but more likely it's you and a team of people. Uh, but again, it doesn't need to be vast numbers. We're very much in always in these videos talking about small business. So before we get into it, if you like these type of videos, make sure to click the subscribe button below so you're notified whenever we release more videos just like it. So let's start off with what is employment allowance. But before we kind of get into what it is, we kind of need a quick recap as to what taxes you pay as an employer. So every month, let's say you're paying your staff, one of your staff's on 30 grand a year, you've, uh, you've agreed 30 grand a year, but of course they don't actually get 30 grand a year in their pocket. What happens is you deduct some tax from them and some national insurance and hand them the rest. Now, when you hand that amount over each month to Revenue and Customs, you'll also get at that level a national insurance bill for you as an employer, it's called class one national insurance, but you pay 13.8%, so that's a fairly hefty bill in national insurance on those wages. Um, and it, it doesn't quite marry up at the moment, but it used to be, you used to be able to say, if they paid national insurance, you'd be paying national insurance. There's actually a little bit of a difference between them, but let's just say roughly that's the case, you know, that you're gonna pay this national insurance over. So it's an extra bill, it's an extra cost, it's almost like, feels like an extra tax to you as an employer. Now what employment allowance is there to do is support small businesses by letting you off the first £4,000 of that national insurance bill on top of the employees, other stuff that goes on. So that's really, really cool. It's a massive saving. At a small business level, that's a really big deal, and I think it's an amazing thing. It used to be 3000 going back a few years. It's now 4000 a year. Now, we're going to talk about what you've got to do in terms of uh, talking to the revenue about that in a minute. But for now, let's talk about how it works and whether you qualify. Now, these videos are always done in the small business world. So there's only, there's a few caveats, but there's just two that are really important. And one of them, I don't even think is that much of an issue for most of you listening. And that is the case of if you paid, so that national insurance bill I mentioned, that 13.8% extra bill, if that in the previous payroll year was over 100,000, you're not gonna be able to claim it. Most of you, that's not even going to be a problem. The one that can be a problem is if you imagine, so in the 21, 22 tax year that's just come in, you can earn up to about £737 a month before paying any national insurance over and having to pay this extra national insurance as an employer. Now, that is an important limit, and I'm sure we'll do other videos talking to you about why that's an important limit, but um, that at that level, uh, you can pay no national insurance and get paid. So what they've said is, if you, the only person paying over that amount is one director, then you can't claim it. So if you imagine if you just had one person getting paid um, a, a limit, let's just say they were getting paid two grand a month, then and everybody else was part-time and not paying over that £737, then you're not going to be able to claim it. I think it's just to protect scenarios where it was just to the director's benefit. They want it to be an employment allowance for that reason and have some sort of overall benefit. So in that particular situation, you wouldn't be able to claim. Now, as we talk later, that still means there's some opportunities for tax planning with, say, husband and wives or multiple directors. But if you're a sole director and you're the only person being paid over that money, you're not going to be able to claim it. So that's worth remembering. Now, in terms of how you actually claim it, it's pretty straightforward. You have to tell the revenue. How you tell the revenue is via your payroll software. So if at the minute, if you get it processed via a payroll agent or an accountant, they'll know how to do this. It's actually a box, there's a yes tick. There's an employment allowance box and you tick it and you have to submit once a tax year. You don't actually have to do it at the start, but it's best to do it at the start so the revenue don't start asking you for money that you don't owe. As we'll talk about in a minute, the way it works is, is kind of in your hands and they might start asking you for money that, that you haven't paid them. So make sure you do it as early as you can in the tax year. And one big trap is you must do this every tax year. It resets every year. So it's not like you can just tell them once and it's auto on, you have to tell them every year. Now the way you do it, 
is you submit what's called a employment payment summary, um, but most people just call it an EPS. And that's a report that you can kind of submit every month via your payroll software. Now there's a box in there that you tick, as we said, and you just submit it. That's all you gotta do, just once. You don't have to keep telling them every month or anything like that. It is just that one time during the tax year to tell them, and that's it. So do that. And then it's kind of on and they know at their end, right, whatever data comes through about what this employer owes, we know that the first £4,000 of that particular class of national insurance is not going to be due. And that's all that happens. Now, how it practically works is if you imagine you've deducted that tax and that national insurance from that employee, and then you're going to have to hand over that extra amount of national insurance. All you do is let's say we wrote £4,000 up here and the extra 13.8% was £1,000. You're just going to deduct the £1,000, don't hand it over. So literally just don't hand it over to the revenue and then you carry forward whatever you got left. So in that example where you had four grand, your amount you should have handed over was a thousand pound. You've now got three thousand pound to carry forward and you can just knock it off each month until it's used. Obviously bigger employers, they might use it in month one. Smaller employers, they might not use all of it and actually it might only be worth a few hundred pounds a year, but it's still a few hundred pounds a year. So that's how you do it. You just practically don't hand over the money, but it's so important that you flagged it with the revenue. So for some reason, your payroll software isn't handling this very well. You can download, and on occasion actually, we've even used it in our payroll department to, for weird historic queries, but you can download what they call HMRC's basic tools. I think maybe there's a bit of a trade description thing there because I'm not sure that it's actually that basic. But anyway, it does give you the ability to submit these EPSs with that tick box for the current year um, outside of anything else, which I think is quite useful and that is free, you can just do it. But what it also allows you to do is you can claim this. So if you haven't claimed it already, you can actually go back four payroll years and claim it and then potentially get a refund from the revenue employers team because they'll have extra money that you would have paid over that's due back. Um, all that can be managed and submitted via these basic tools if you can't do it on your payroll software. Because I know some payroll software kind of closes the year off and it can be a pain to reopen it. Um, and in this instance, you might then want to do it. So check that out because if you haven't claimed it, you still can. We did it for an employer quite recently and they just didn't know about it. And that's what actually prompted the video. Now, finally, I did say that I would tell you a little bit about small business direct tax planning. So one of the things that might be possible, if you imagine, it's probably outside the scope of this video, but quite often in uh, a one director company might pay themselves, say, um, £8,800 a year or, or there, thereabouts. It depends on the exact level as we go through the tax years and it moves, but for various reasons that might be the case. They won't pay any national insurance. It's a good kind of level to, to pay at. Now, uh, what can happen is you might bring on another person who you can then pay, and if both of you, so if there's two directors or there's a director and an admin person, and they're being paid over £737 each, then actually the employment allowance is going to come into play. So you can have a look and number crunch and you might find that you can actually use some of that allowance to make the overall tax position better. I'm really not gonna go into it in any detail in this video. I'm just gonna let you know and put that sort of nugget there and say, look, there are opportunities where you can do that, but we'd be here all day with spreadsheets and me showing you the overall tax position. But just consider that if you've got multiple directors or multiple people that are kind of connected with a company uh, on that payroll. So that's it really right now. They're the basic things you need to do. And if you take away anything from this video, make sure to submit that EPS at least once every tax year to claim this employment allowance where you are eligible. That's it, we'll see you on the next one.